Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Robocop or Roboflop? Download a disease? Trudeau knew though, blue collar billionaire. <laughs> And you're here with the Sigma Tiger, one and only. And 10,000 subs reveals the monster behind the mask. Let's go ahead and subscribe, share, like, throw a comment in the bottom. Tell me what you think of this. Harvard trained nutrition expert. If I could only prioritize one food in my diet, it'd be this. What, what's your guess? What do you think? What could it be? Salad? Vegetables? Fruit, perhaps? Maybe one of these superfoods that they talk about. Well, let's dive right in. Meat is good for you. There are experts who might disagree with me, and many researchers continue to search for evidence linking meat to heart disease, for example. But as a Harvard-trained board-certified psychiatrist specializing in nutritional and metabolic psychiatry, interesting, I've long been curious about the relationship between food and brain health, as well as overall well-being. And in my research, I have yet to find a credible, plausible health argument against eating meat of any kind, including red meat, seafood, and poultry, also known as chicken. <clears throat> in fact, no other food group is nutritious enough, safe enough, or geographically accessible enough to recommend as the healthy foundation of the optimal human diet. So if I could only afford to buy food from one food group, I'd prioritize we eat meat. Well, why? Everyone's saying meat's bad. Um, scientists have come out saying, like, you know, our teeth aren't designed to eat meat. They're designed to, to grind and chomp things. Our digestive tract is much too long to process meats. And uh, if you look at a carnivorous animal such as, like, lion or tiger, their uh, intestinal tract's very short. Because you don't want meat, uh, basically, full, like, rotting flesh it going through your intestines, you know. Well, that's the theory. <clears throat> meat is good for gut health because it's non-irritating, easy to digest, and supports healthy insulin levels without promoting blood glucose spikes, which some carbohydrates may cause, especially <clears throat> like sugar. Uh, it also provides all the macro and micronutrients we need, including some that are difficult or impossible to obtain from plant foods. For instance, it's an excellent source of every B vitamin, including B7, which plants contain very little of, and B12, which plants do not contain at all. Only meat contains hemi-iron, a form of iron at least three times easier for us to absorb than non-hemi-iron in plants. And only animal source foods contain the MK4 form of vitamin K2, which is easier to absorb and is the form used by the human brain. Some scientists even argue that eating meat made us human, meaning that it allowed us to devote less energy and bodily real estate to the long intestinal tract needed to process high fiber, high plant diets so that we can invest more energy in developing or uniquely, our uniquely oversized brains. <clears throat> interesting. Isn't that interesting? So we talked about um, gut health and your mind, and now we have uh, your body processing food, like fi high fiber foods, vegetables, grains, um basically plant diets take a long time for our body to process and saying well meat just kind of goes through well maybe that's why they only had short intestines it's not the fact that we don't need long intestines or short intestines it's just that meat processes through easier maybe it's a higher uh moisture content but it has the micro and macro nutrients we have so choose healthy meats whenever possible don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good uh, it doesn't have to be red meat. Shellfish, fatty fish, duck, and poultry liver are all highly nutritious alternatives to red meat. So that's the other side. Organ meat. <clears throat> There's a debate about that as well. Uh, a lot of toxins can uh, um, be found in the liver. <clears throat> so is it the best thing to, um, to be eating? Depends on where the animal comes from. What it is eating. What is its environment like? Don't fear natural animal fats. Well, guess what? That's what humans used to use for energy. They used to save fat. It was the most important thing because it doesn't spoil. 
you can keep that stuff forever and uh, it's a great energy source if you get your body to go into ketosis or uh, relying on fat for energy as opposed to carbohydrates then there are many benefits cook it gently don't overcook it it will damage the nutrients and the flavor and think about your protein goal don't overdo it there you go <clears throat> Trudeau calls invite for Ukrainian who fought with Nazis deeply embarrassing yeah this is old news this happened in September what are you talking about Tiger well uh, Yaroslav Honka <clears throat> he fought for the first uh, Galician division in the uh, uh, in the war over there and anyway so uh, this guy speaker of the House of Commons Anthony Rota he took the fall Okay, he was like, yeah, well, you know, it was me who went ahead and invited him. Well, he went ahead and let the uh, Prime Minister know about it. And people were like, okay, well, you know, he didn't invite him. You know, the Prime Minister didn't invite him. This guy did. And he should have vetted him better. But it's, oh, it's totally within his purview to do what he had done. But he just did a poor job. And Trudeau's like, ooh, that's embarrassing. And the guy goes ahead and steps down. Well, guess what? <clears throat> Turns out Prime Minister invited the wife and SS veteran Honka to his official reception for Zelensky. So before they had a Zelensky enter the House of Commons, they had like this welcome party for him. And uh, clearly the office of the Prime Minister knew of Rota's invitation. And uh, they went ahead and sent him another one to the reception. Come on in. You know, meet Z Vladimir Zelensky. Go ahead. Check it out. So he invited Mr. Honka, the uh, Ukrainian Waffen SS veteran who received two ovations in the House Commons during a visit by Volodymyr Zelensky to a reception he hosted in the Ukrainian president's honor the same day. So they were well aware. The office was. Now whether Justin Trudeau was aware or not, probably not. Because he doesn't deal in any of the affairs. He's got everyone running around doing all the dirty work. Okay? And I'm sure he's a little bit miffed about the fact that his... Uh, assistants and his office employees can't put together uh, <clears throat> a coherent invitation to someone uh, who's relevant, not a Nazi. Mr. Rota was sharply criticized by MPs of all stripes for inviting Mr. Honka, constituent, and not vetting him properly. It's clear that failures and due diligence were not limited to the office of the Speaker and extended to the office of the Prime Minister Trudeau. It's unfortunate that the vetting process was either insufficient or perhaps even non-existent. Yeah, so there you go. The office of the uh, Liberal Prime Minister is bloated. If you look at the government spending, it's out of control. And uh, yeah, they hired too many people. So how are you going to get rid of them when they're all uh, unionized? You can't. So there it is. The surprising and alarming reason behind the U.S. out-of-control STI epidemic, and it starts with dating apps. Download a disease. Yeah, we covered this. Syphilis is on a rampage. Gonorrhea seems to have leveled out. But syphilis uh, is out of control. And why? Well, bisexual men and Tinder. Leading sexual health experts have blamed high record cases of sexually transmitted infections on the explosion in popularity of dating apps like Hinge and Bumble. Sorry, Tinder. Uh, last week, officials deemed the spiraling cases of conditions like chlamydia and syphilis striking the U.S. an out-of-control epidemic. The warning followed the release of the latest CDC data that showed 2.5 million cases of STIs were detected in 2022, marking a rise in chlamydia and, most worryingly, potentially deadly syphilis, and also, like, uh, can make you go crazy. <clears throat> so, perhaps it's like the rebound effect from having everyone shot in and not allowed to leave their houses or, um, you know, when you do, you're limited to where you can go. Perhaps it's, you know, everyone's like, oh, yeah, it's a, you know, the rebound effect. Prevalence of the infection, which can damage the brain and heart, has shot up almost 80% in five years. Wow, shocking. Uh, they led to a fierce debate among medical community as to what is causing the alarming situation. Uh, for some instances, have pointed to the staggering drop in condom use among young American men, almost 30% since 2011, according to some studies. So, five warning signs of syphilis. You have swollen glands in your uh, uh, throat or esophagus. Hair loss. Interesting. Rash on the palms. Hmm. I mean, maybe that's where it came from, uh, the hairy palm thing. Uh, multiple sores in the genital region. And, of course, uh, looks like uh, fever symptoms. So, these are the rates of reported cases in the United States by year, starting in 1941. Seems like they rose sharply during uh, the war and thereafter, and then dropped. 
and now you see that they're bottoming out. So you can see between 2000 and 2011 would have been the time to purchase this asset. <clears throat> Just joking. Uh, if you're into that kind of stuff, check out at Tiger Trade. Doctors have intriguing theories as to why. Now, some of the U.S. leading sexual health experts have told Daily Mail of their fascinating explanations. The COVID hangover, of course, I just mentioned dating, uh, the digital dating revolution. Uh, syphilis was on the verge of eradication with a record low 5,797 cases in 2000. And uh, now there are 207,000. So amazing increase there. Grinder, a dating app used by gay men, launched in 2009 when syphilis cases among men who have sex with men began to gradually rise. Experts suggest the app's expanded access to sexual partners as Americans no longer had to rely on meeting potential suitors in person. All of a sudden, you have a bunch of potential mates at your fingertips, and so I think that could definitely play a role. There you have it. <clears throat> okay, so here is the breakdown of people who have it. Uh, men with unknown sex of sex partners, 18%. Women, 24%. Unknown sex, 0.1%. Men who have sex with men only, 29%, leading the uh, the group. Men who have sex with men and women, 4.8%, very small. Men who have sex with women only, 22%. So there you have it. Increasing number of uh, men who have sex with both men and women serve as bridges between gay men and heterosexual networks. There you have it. All right, RoboCop, RoboFlop. The NYPD paid, uh, I don't know, 12 grand for this thing. Maybe 27 grand. I, th I hope so. I hope it's not 12 million. Uh, yeah, so they put this thing in the subway and it was supposed to go bleep, bloop, bloop, woo, woo, and like get uh, homeless people to stop defecating in the hallways. Okay, here we go. NYPD pulls the plug on its Times Square subway police robot just months after Mayor Eric Adams touted the $12,500 machine as part of the fabric of the future. The security robot has been pulled from its Times Square station post uh, in the subway just months after uh, the mayor described it as part of the fabric of the future. <clears throat> so they had a fleet of Big Brother Robocops that would patrol the city streets and subways in April. Uh, announced another robot would be joining the department. Almost 400 pound robot to roam the Times Square 42nd Street subway station and patrol the mezzanine level of the station. The AI driven security robots are no longer being deployed. Uh, officials confirmed on Sunday the end of the robot security at the Big Apple's most busy subway station comes after Adams calls the tech part of the system's future. Well, clearly not. And look at it. It is just hilarious. It looks just like the men in uniform. Very pear-shaped. Doing just as good of a job by the looks of it. Adams pledged to bring more technology to the nation's largest police department as part of its promise to focus on combating crime, which is now out of control with the migrants on their... Uh, their mopeds ripping around, tearing purses from uh, women's clutches. And basically he was saying, this is below minimum wage. Uh, we're going to take away the job from an actual human who could do it, potentially. Uh, it can uh, shoot movies and move at three miles per hour, less than a walking speed. Apparently it knocked a 16-month-old to the ground at a California mall and ran over one of his feet. There you have it. So these are completely uh, trash. Better off to have a human or perhaps contact Boston Dynamics and get one of their robot dogs. But these um, pear-shaped um, robots are absolute trash. What are they supposed to do? Nothing. No one is scared of police. Why would they be scared of a robot who does not have a gun? Atmospheric River. You might be hearing about that on the news. What the heck is it? Well, it could flood the driest place in America. And where is that? Death Valley. And they call it Death Valley because there's nothing but death and dryness. Flood watch has been issued for the driest place in North America as an atmospheric river continues to dump excessive precipitation across California, and precipitation is rain. The atmospheric river arrived on Sunday and wreaked havoc with severe rain, snow, and high winds. The storm followed a similar system that brought a deluge of rain to the state last week, leading to a saturated ground prone to flooding with the second system. Catastrophic flooding did occur, particularly in Los Angeles County. The National Weather Service had issued a flood watch for Death Valley National Park as the storm moves east. The park is the hottest place on Earth. Interesting. Atmospheric rivers are defined as a long, narrow region in the atmosphere, like rivers in the sky that transport most of the water vapor outside of the tropics, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So here's an image of Death Valley and the lake that just happened to appear. So what they're stating is that uh, there's currents of wind that carry water vapor. And what is water vapor? It's a cloud. 
that's what it is. Water droplets suspended in air is a cloud. You know, water vapor, same thing. And basically those clouds in high altitudes uh, act like a river and they flow. Kind of like in the jet stream where uh, the wind current is. So they said 0.73 inches of rain has fallen at Furnace Creek, California, Death Valley, which is 190 feet below sea level. And 0.1 to 2 inches of rain is still expected. It sounds like nothing, but for a desert, I guess it is quite a lot. Um, Hillary flooded the regions. Yeah, so whatever. A winter storm warning for snow means severe winter weather conditions will make weather very hazardous or impossible. If you must travel, keep an extra flashlight, food, water in your vehicle in case of emergency. Absolutely. Regardless of the uh, Sky River, if you're going to Death Valley, then make sure you're prepared. And uh, what do we have here? It could be like a blue-collar billionaire? Mm, maybe not. Joe Rogan, I mean, you know, he's not white-collar. He's definitely a working man. He put in uh, a lot of work into his craft of comedy and uh, then his uh, long-form conversations and podcasts basically like took podcasting to the mainstream. And he's blasting U.S. culture for demonizing blue-collar work while putting white-collar work on a pedestal. Uh, I guess just being a plumber electrician to get very rich. Do you agree? Well, that's a great question. Do I agree? Well, I agree with uh, economic uh, cycles and employment cycles. And I remember when I uh, was growing up and completing uh, high school, everyone was like, you must get a degree. Degrees are the most important thing in life. And then as I was getting uh, a degree, as advised, um, I had some other friends who chose not to follow that path and went ahead and did a trade. Well, what's that? A tradesperson? Well, it would be like a plumber, an electrician, a carpenter, you know, metal fabricator, something like that, right? Anything that involves using your hands and uh, trading a service or creating a good, you know, not empl being employed necessarily doing uh, paperwork in an office. So, you know, I, then there was like a demand. I was like, what the heck's going on here? There's a massive demand for tradespeople because people are retiring, right? So, you know, that's kind of like what's happening. And eventually there's going to be a demand for uh, these higher educated people as well. Like right now, like a bachelor's degree, an undergraduate degree is like, uh, you know, a, uh, college degree or a community college degree now. And like, typically you're looking towards a master's or, uh, even a doctorate before you would even consider someone without experience. Um, yeah. So let's have a look at this. Amid headlines of layoffs in banking and tech, many Americans may be wondering if their job is in danger this year, especially with the advent of AI. What's going to happen to your job if AI can do it? While well, generations of American uh, parents have pushed their kids to go to college and work their way up through the ranks of white-collar job, Joe Rogan seems to think they've been off the mark. Well, currently, yeah, like, you know, there's a major demand for tradespeople. And there's too many uh, university students and university uh, degrees that are worthless. Like, I know a friend who's, like, mega smart and did, like, a pure math degree or pure applied math, something like this, because he was a genius. And he did like a, a minor in another math. And you know what he does? Nothing to do with math or science or anything like that. So what was the point? $60,000 to say that you're good with numbers. And hang something on your wall. It's very bizarre that we somehow or another demonize blue collar work and put white collar work on a pedestal. Whereas like the freedom comes from owning your own business. That's real freedom. Yeah, not punching the clock. Having two weeks off a year that must be approved. How about you're a plumber? And you put your number out there with a, a, a picture of a, a plunger and a wrench. And that's all you need. And like Joe's Plumbing Incorporated or Limited, whatever, probably limited liability company. And then you just wait for the phone to ring. And you're like, yeah, Joe's Plumbing. Yeah, I'll be there between uh, 12 and 6. And they're like, excuse me? Why? And they're like, well, I'm busy. I'm doing other things. I've got other clients. So if you want my help, then you'll stay at home between 12 and 6 and I'll be there. The freedom can be pretty sweet financially too, as explained by Kennedy. You want to be the richest person on the planet right now? In Austin, be in construction, be an electrician, be a plumber. He suggested 200000 average income of a good electrician here in Austin. Yeah, of course you got to build up. you got to get your red seal. you got to start at the bottom. 
and you work your way up, which is not hard when there is a massive demand for these tradespeople. Uh, two years of trade school, become an electrician. You spend a year and a half, two, as an apprentice. So you get on-the-job training as opposed to a four-year university degree where you go to class all day and write exams just regurgitating what's in a book. And then you finish with massive amount of debt and zero experience. So here you go. Uh, you go and start working for a couple years uh, for a guy that owns a shop. You go and start your own, your electrician business. It's going to be worth $10 million in three years here in Austin. And you can go do multiple trades. And then, like, imagine you could uh, be a carpenter and also do a business degree. And then you can open up a, uh, a construction company, right? And just hire people. Independent contractors come and work for you. It's easy. Things are easy. Don't just believe that uh, university is the way forward, especially when it's just reading a book. Because we just talked about AI. Well, what's AI going to do to education when you don't necessarily need to read a book anymore? Like you'll have a companion that has all of the information available to you at your fingertips. Not unlike Google or the internet right now, but imagine like, you know, it's going to speak to you. It's going to know. It's going to have access to everything. It will be able to discern effortlessly. Yeah, so there you go. It's cyclical. If you get into trades now, by the time you're finished, there might be too many of them because of stuff like this. So there it is. Middle East Security Council meets on U.S. strikes in Iraq and Syria. Well, if you don't know, uh, the Houthis are down in the Red Sea and they're causing a whole bunch of trouble to the trade routes and trying to take out military assets with cruise missiles. And uh, so uh, Iran went ahead and bombed Pakistan militants. And Pakistan retaliated, bombed Iranian militants, and then the U.S. was like, okay, enough. We, we're going to go in and bomb Yemen and take care of a bunch of youthy assets. And then, um, yeah, I don't know if you got the memo, Iraq, but uh, we're going to take a few assets out in uh, Iraq and Syria as well. And then Iraq was like, whoa, hang on a minute. You didn't let us know. And they were like, we sent you a fax or an, a text. I know we didn't have a verbal communication, but we did uh, send you a notice. Uh, perhaps it's uh, still in the mail, right? And so they're like, what? This is like a total infringement on our sovereignty. Imagine Iraq said that there was a, a, an asset that was opposed to them in, on American soil, and they just sent a bomb in there. Yeah, you imagine what would happen. Well, there was uh, weapons of mass destruction fabricated back in the 2000s, and we all know what happened there. The UN's Rosemary DiCarlo briefed ambassadors first warning that escalating attacks were fueling chances of miscalculation. Absolutely, the tensions that have engulfed multiple countries in the Middle East continue to rise. Perhaps we are at 1154, maybe 1153 and a half. Uh, yeah, we're getting closer and closer to, the, uh, to 12 o'clock here, to go time. Blue line to the Red Sea. Repeated rocket fire also took place over the occupied Golan between Israel and militias reportedly linked to Iran, as well as airstrikes attributed to Israel by Damascus on multiple locations in Syria, she added. She also noted that the Houthi drone and missile attacks against ships in the Red Sea and the retaliatory strikes by the U.S. and U.K. I reiterate the Security General's call on all parties to step back from the brink and to consider the unbearable human and economic costs of a potential regional conflict and wouldn't even be regional this thing has the potential to pop off as we said to world war three and uh what's going on with the migrants in the uk well uh i don't know if they can use this one here over in the states but heads up at the church uh absolutely outrageous a sky news reporter revealed that the local vicars or um men of the cloth uh are kept busy with around 20 of the men baptized just last weekend. Converting to Christianity is deemed a reason uh, that it's unsafe to return to some countries. These sickening loopholes must end. So what's happening here is we have Muslims that have entered the country and uh, seeking asylum, and they don't have a legitimate reason to stay in the country. So they find one or create one and say, okay, well, guess what? Like, you know, if I'm a Christian now. And if I go back to my Muslim country and they know I converted, then I'm dead. Because that's what it says in uh, the Quran. Straight up, that's it. If you uh, denounce Mus uh, Islam, then you are uh, dead. Sharia law or whatever it is. So heads up there. There uh, might be some uh, fake Christians cooking around. And uh, we showed you a little something there yesterday about a guy driving 
with his Apple gear on, getting pulled over. And let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So, I think I've come to the one The future is now, and it is today. Look at this. Absolute losers. Okay, China's new Hyperloop train just hit a record 387 miles per hour during testing. Can you imagine being on that? What would it feel like? Uh, it could eventually soar to 621, almost doubling the current record. China could soon have a train that is as fast as a plane. Isn't the Hyperloop what Elon's working on? So what's going on? Is China just totally undercutting him? Because uh, it seems like a lot of his Hyperloop uh, projects are being defunded or at least shelved for the time being. Uh, CASC Designs develops and manufactures everything from spacecraft to missiles, but it's currently working on a Hyperloop. The company has built a section of low vacuum tube that is roughly 1.2 miles, 2 kilometers, in a facility in the Shangxi province of China, according to New Atlas. It has conducted numerous tests over the past several months, but this is the first time its T-flight train has broken a record. The high-speed flyer reportedly eclipsed the highest record Maglev Speed 375 set by the Japanese low series train, though Kasich did not disclose the exact, exact top speed, just that they had uh, surpassed the current one. And whatever to that, so keep an eye out for the future. Houthi rebels fire uh, missiles at two ships at Red Sea as the Red Sea crisis rages on. So yeah, we're definitely 1154 uh, now. Well confirmed, six minutes away. The Iran-backed Houthi rebels targeted two commercial ships sailing in the southern Red Sea following airstrikes by the United States and the United Kingdom on dozens of locations across Yemen, Iraq, in Syria over the weekend. The escalation around the maritime choke point has led to a blockade of ships marking a new round of cost push inflation due to snarled supply chains. Reuters quoted a Houthi spokesman who said anti-ship missiles were fired at the Morning Tide and Starnasia flying Barbados and Marshall Island flags respectively as British and American. British maritime security firm Ombre said Morning Tide suffered damage from a suicide drone while sailing southeast through the Red Sea. No injuries were reported. So they uh, continue to uh, unprovokedly attack any sort of uh, asset of the UK or um, the US. If you're bearing a flag there in the Red Sea, then look out. You will be a target. So what's happening is that instead of having to go through the Red Sea, they're having to travel all the way down to uh, the south of Africa. So it's causing shipping rates to increase. Uh, last heard, up 300%. China is not pleased with what's going on in the Middle East after trying to sign some deals uh, for a new Silk Road. Uh, perhaps this is part of the plan. We'll keep you posted. EU Commission sets tougher climate targets, gives sham concessions to farmers. So this is the European Conservative here. Uh, so what's happening? Brussels and Germany, farmers are taking to the highways. Uh, going to uh, parliaments and municipalities and uh, protesting. They're not pleased with how they're being told to change how they do their jobs, more restrictions, more regulations, and they feel that it's uh, infringing on their rights as farmers, as humans, and food providers. Because guess what? If there's no food, what are we going to do? What happens when you go to the store and there's no food? Do you have any stockpiles? Do you have any uh, dehydrated food or canned food? Do you have any vacuum sealed rice, uh, perhaps? Like, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have those things, uh, especially with what's going on with supply chain. You know, what happens if World War III pops off? What happens if someone actually drops a bomb? The miscalculation that we spoke of. So anyway, um, the European Commission is set to unveil newly revised climate policy recommendations Tuesday, February 6th, pushing for even tougher CO2 reduction targets, but also giving several, although mostly symbolic, concessions to agricultural sector in response to a month-long farmers' protests across the continent. According to the final draft of recommendations sent by Politico, the Commission pushes for a 90% overall reduction of CO2 compared to the 1990 levels. 
by 2040. Previously, only a 2030 target was set at 55%, as well as complete climate neutrality by 2050. According to the Commission, the 90% emissions reduction by the end of the decade is crucial for Europe to be able to reach 100% neutrality by mid-century. So these are alarmingly um, uh, 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 lofty goals here. Like, you know what I mean? Almost every goal I've ever seen set has never been met. Not even close. Like, just look back in history. Uh, look at Canada's environmental goals. Like, as a prime minister enters or a president. Or uh, just look at, like, France or Germany and China. Like, any goals that were set by uh, environmental commissions and all these. None of it's met. It's ridiculous. And it just keeps getting uh, uh, more enforced through carbon taxes and things like that. It's just a huge takeaway uh, and control, it seems. You know what I mean? Like, if you control the food, you control everything. Like, there were kings that uh, would, like, uh, harvest all of the wheat and keep it in the silo and just ration it out here and there. Well, guess what? Eventually, the people were like, we're coming to get it. Horrific video shows woman dragged along New York City street by migrant moped gang linked to dozens of brazen attacks, 62 grand larcenies. We mentioned this last night. Uh, failed to mention the moped. Let's go ahead and have a look. Warning, distressing content. Coming up at the uh, upper left hand of the screen, you see the moped dragging a lady by her purse who then legs smash into and hyperextend against this metal pole. Uh, luckily, a bystander on her bike uh, stops to help. And uh, the lady is clearly not in good shape. She was able to hold on to her bag by the look of it. Yeah, absolutely iron grip there. Uh, we pray for her and hope she's okay. And uh, the swift arrest of these absolute scum who are terrorizing our nation. Uh, New York City gifted and talented students arrested in horrific caught on video bus beatdown. Weirdo should have died, quote unquote, from the uh, assailant. So what's happening here? The world is dark, and if you don't know, uh, there seems to be demons uh, inside of everybody. We're not gonna show this one. Uh, unnecessary to see a child beat up. 10 middle schoolers were arrested for allegedly assaulting a Coney Island classmate in a brutal caught on video bus beatdown. The victim, who one fellow student later callously declared deserved it and should have died, could be heard shrieking in pain as a pack of kids collectively rained punches on him in the January 26th incident. Footage shared with the Post and posted on social media show. The boy can be seen trying to protect his head from the relentless fists while he's passed down the aisle by his detectors on an MTA shuttle bus. Which brings kids from Mark Twain IS-239 for the gifted and talented to the Stillwell Avenue subway station. So there you are, the gifted and talented hoodlums. The beating continues for several minutes, moving from the back of the crammed bus to the front as the boy is punched, slapped, kicked, and even hit with a sneaker. Kids can be seen with their phones out filming the madness while others are standing on seats, hanging from the railings, getting a good look at what's happening here. The view uh, of these monsters as uh, the child is receiving a beatdown. And here's someone filming, someone filming. Chaos unfolds. More photos and videos shared on social media show the accused perpetrators handcuffed and being taken away in a police van. The victim effing deserved that he's a effing weirdo and he should have died. Free them, it adds, referring to the cuff kids. So yeah, Snapchats, all over the gaff. We got a bunch of uh, terrible children here uh, wondering if they do have fathers at home uh, who would potentially discipline and teach them uh, respect. Likely not. Mother's probably at work, raised by a babysitter, something like that. And of course, the nuclear family is the problem, as everyone of an alternative lifestyle would tell you, and how great their mental health is, is the gauge. Moving right along, uh, the migrants coming up, well, guess what? They're not only robbing you and uh, taking your money by a taxpayer dollars, they're also uh, leaving their dogs at the border. Because guess what? They don't care about anything. Uh, pet dogs traveling thousands of miles to U.S.-Mexico border are being abandoned by migrant owners in a new crisis. Yeah, so what's going to happen to all these dogs that are left at the border? They're going to get hungry. They're going to start eating each other. They're going to start attacking the migrants. So what's going to happen here? 
Faithful dogs are walking thousands of miles to the U.S.-Mexico border with their migrant owners, only to be abandoned in droves once there. Migrants trekking to the U.S. either bring their pets or pick animals up along the way without realizing animals are subject to strict rules for entry at the border. Yeah, guess what? Humans come on in, but your uh, little mutt there must stay. Your little kitty cat cannot come across. The Post spotted dozens of domestic breeds of dogs, now strays, wandering on both sides of the border at Eagle Pass, Texas this month. Many were simply abandoned like piles of cloth, backpack shoes, and children's toys discarded all along the banks of the Rio Grande. Some were injured, many looked terrified and flinched even when just passed as a bowl, uh, passed a bowl of water. Most were starving and reduced to scrounging food wherever possible. Absolutely, look at this guy. What a photo. Poor dog stuck inside the razor wire, just looking for a little snack to chomp on. Uh, here we have one looking for shade from the heat of the southern uh, Texas sun. Problems much bigger than any well-meaning personal group can tackle on their own. Center for Disease Control Prevention required dogs to have a valid microchip and rabies vaccination certificate. So they're definitely 100% not receiving that. And uh, dogs from countries that are deemed at high risk for rabies, including Colombia, Ecuador, El Salvador, Guatemala, Haiti, Honduras, Belize, Bolivia, and Peru, among others, uh, are not going to be let in. So guess what? Your, uh, your best friend is now relegated to the trash pile. Super sad. Another reason why we should be uh, telling them to stay with their animals instead of becoming one. And there you have it. Thank you for joining the Sigma Tiger. Go ahead, like, subscribe, share. 10,000 subs. The mask comes off. Let's find out who the blue-eyed monster truly is. Sigma Tiger, signing out.